In this channel, we talk a lot about using Python for data science, and a main package that we use a lot is Pandas. But there's a lot of times where Pandas seems to be inefficient and slow, especially when working with extremely large data set. And often I'll see people commenting saying that there are better alternatives than Pandas that we can use in those cases. But how do these packages compare to each other? Well, today's video, we're gonna run a test of some of the most popular alternatives to Pandas. So here I am in a Jupyter Notebook. Now this isn't gonna be a complete comparison and every different data set comes with its own problems. It also depends on the machine that you're running on, but I think this will give, give us a good idea of the benefits of each. We're also going to be cutting a lot in this video because the time that it takes to run some of these cells is a while and I don't think you wanna wait around for them. So we'll fast forward through those. But the main ones we're gonna look at are Dask, Ray, Modin, and Vayek. Some of these actually rely on each other. So some of them are architectures that are used by each other, but I was starting to understand this by reading this article that's out there about comparing Pandas versus Dask versus Vayek. And actually they talk about Rapids, which is uh, an alternative that uses GPUs. So we're only gonna be looking at DAX, VAX, Modin, and Ray. But you can see here, they give some reasons why in that article they think certain ones are more either mature in the code base or popular, but we're gonna give it a try for ourselves and see how things go. So I am gonna install Pandas and NumPy from scratch just by running pip install. And then I'll show you here the versions that I'm running as of today, and then the data set that we're gonna be working with. This data set is a massive parquet file that holds all the history of Reddit Place. And if you don't know what Reddit Place is, all you need to know is it's a, a really big data set that holds positions and pixels in a big canvas and when people clicked on those. So this file is 16 gigabytes in size and it's not too big for my computer's memory, but it'll be good for running these tests. Now, of course, if the data is too large for memory, you're not gonna ever gonna be able to open it in pandas. So it's not really a fair comparison. And some of the tests that I wanna run on these, first, just reading in the file, then, taking one column and seeing if we can compute something like the mean or standard deviation. And we're also gonna do a unique count for a column to see how long that takes and do something like a cumulative sum where the algorithm actually has to take each value and add the previous values to it. And then we're gonna do a group by aggregation. So we're gonna group by the user column in this and then find the average per user and see how long it takes with this massive large data set. Okay, so first one is just reading in this massive parquet file and we're gonna do it in pandas. So this is the first version, this is our baseline. Let's go ahead and read in the file. Okay, so it is done reading. It took one minute and 46 seconds to read this large parquet file. I used this time method at the beginning of the cell to time how long it took to run. It took a while while I was sitting here just waiting for it to run. Um, just to show you the size of this file, the shape of it is really large. We have only five columns, but there are 160 million it looks like, so different rows in this data set. So it's large, but not too big for memory. Let's run the head command on this just to make sure we can see what the data looks like. So we have a timestamp column, a user ID column, which is a long hashed user ID name, a pixel color column, an X and a Y column. So these are the locations and we'll be using these to benchmark how long it takes to run some of these results. So let's start with that. So we're gonna take this X column of this 160 million rows and we're gonna compute the mean of that just using standard pandas. That's what we're using right now. All right, that was really quick. 167 milliseconds is pretty fast and uh, we have the mean value here. I'm just storing it as underscore, but um, just printing it here. This is the mean value. Um, so I could print this is we can check that later. And we can run this again, because it was so fast. Oh, look, it's even faster that time. All right, so now let's run the standard deviation done. So the standard deviation value is here, and that took 
1.13 seconds to run. Now let's take this user ID column and let's find the number of unique values there are in the user ID column. So this might take a little bit longer and let's try it. Okay, so that one's done to find the unique user IDs and I just printed the length of that. So there are, uh, looks like, 10 million unique user IDs, but to find that in this large data set took one minute and 17 seconds. And now we're gonna do the cumulative sum. All right, that was surprisingly fast, 1.09 seconds. And the last test I wanna do is a group by function. So we're gonna group by all the users in this data set and find for each user the average X value. And that one's done. So that took the longest out of everything, two minutes and two seconds. So I'm just gonna quickly here summarize the results. For pandas, the summary results, uh, reading the parquet, group by mean, and finding the unique IDs took a while. Everything else was pretty quick once the data was in memory. So we're gonna compare first here to something called Ray. Ray is a low level framework for paralyzing Python code. So it's not necessarily a drop-in replacement for Pandas, but we can go here to Ray's website and it looks like they have something called Ray data sets which will let us read in files and we'll try to do some of these aggregations as much as we can. Next, I imported Ray and I'm printing the Ray version so we know. Looking in the Ray docs, it does look like they have a read parquet. So let's see how this compares to pandas and we will call it Ray dataset and run a time command on it. Now, one thing to notice is we have now this Ray dashboard that we can look at. The Ray dashboard shows me some of the things being used by this local computer. It can be run on multiple machines, so I think that's why we can group these by the host and actually see what each of my CPUs is doing, it looks like. So looking at this data set, it is uh, called data set. Can I run a head command on this? No, I can't. I'm looking at the docs and it looks like I can run a dot schema to see all the different values in here. So we do have the X, Y, the pixel color. Again, looking at the docs, it looks like here that we, to find the mean value of the X value, we'd have to run this aggregate function on this Ray data set. And I wanna make sure I time this. So let's run this timed. So remember how quick pandas took to take the average value of this X column. And keep in mind that's because that was already loaded into memory and it appears like this might be reading in the data frame while it's trying to aggregate the mean value. So when we ran in, read in this data set, this five seconds may have not actually pulled in the data into memory. This is also referred to sometimes as a lazy evaluation. We'll see it in the other packages. Five minutes later. Okay, so it's been a while and I had planned on running this mean and then the standard deviation, but honestly, it's taken too long for me to wait for it. I'm not sure what's going on in this Ray dashboard, um, but at least for this type of problem, we can already see that trying to run just an average value on a single column, Ray is probably not what it's intended for. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. So I'm gonna to try to run the standard deviation on the X column like we did before, just by using this syntax, and I think it should do it similarly. It looks like the dashboard's doing something, but I'm not quite sure why it's taking so long. Okay, this has been running for a while also, so I'm just gonna kill it. Um, I As I hit kill it, it looks like it has a countdown going for two minutes, which is much longer than it took for the pandas. So we're just gonna continue on. What we're realizing is that for a data set that can fit into memory, Ray is not what it's intended for, at least not the data set API. We're gonna look at Modin later, which actually uses Ray at the, as a backend. So maybe that'll be a better replacement. So we're gonna skip over for Ray and just look at this group by aggregation. So. It looks like doing a group by and then an aggregation of the mean value may work. And I think the syntax is just a little bit different. Now keep in mind this took uh, group two minutes for the pandas code to work. But as I look, it doesn't look like this, it's using many of the CPUs. Uh, now it looks like it's using 11%, but 
Still, I would think it would use most of my CPUs if it's able to do it parallel. And the result is, for some reason, there mu there's an error. Um, something about concatenating arrays, so this is not a good sign. It could be an issue with my setup, although I'm not quite sure what it would be. But I think we're going to go ahead and say um, Ray on its own for this application at least was not a success. So nothing worked <laughs> is the simple result. Let's move on here to using Dask. So looking here at the Dask website, they provide advanced parallelism for analytics. It looks like they do things like NumPy, similar to Pandas and Scikit-Learn. So hopefully we'll have a little bit more success with using Dask. And I'm going to import it and print the version. It looks like they do versioning by the month. So this is the beginning of 2022. Go ahead and read it in using DD for Dask data frame. All right, so that ran in super fast. And the reason why is it is because it actually hasn't read in the file into memory yet. It will only do that once it we run something like this head command. And let's go ahead and run that and see how long this takes. Okay, there we go. We've ran, run the head command on this DAS data frame. And you can see that this took a long time. It took about two minutes and 43 seconds. It, that's comparable to about the amount of time it took to read in the Parquet file into Pandas. So although the, running the read Parquet function on DAS data frame was quick, that's because it was waiting to actually read it until we ran something like a head command. Now this can be really helpful in a situation where you actually don't, you wanna chain your commands and have it run optimized. But for something like this, it, you know, it's comparable to pandas. Let's continue on and run the mean value of this X column in the DAS data frame. That was pretty quick, 5.72 seconds. So now that it's read in the data frame, the results are pretty fast. Running the standard deviation of this X column took 5.59 seconds. Now compare that to the 1.3 seconds it took with pandas. Now we're gonna take the number of unique values in user ID. Okay, so we've got the unique values from the user ID column and it took over four minutes. So it's slower than just using raw pandas. Now this always confuses me because I know that Dask is designed to work for larger data sets and it may be that it's designed more so to work across different nodes, but I would think that it would run at least as fast as pandas and that's not the case. Let's go ahead and keep going and do the cumulative sum. Okay, so cumulative sum computed in about seven seconds. So. Uh, didn't have to wait around four minutes that time. The last one we want to do is this group by computation. Five minutes later. And we are done. So I've been sitting here for a while. It's been six minutes and 48 seconds to compute this group by aggregation using Dask. Certainly not faster than pandas out, out of the box. And while that was running, I already prepared this summary of all the results and how long they took for each of our tests. Let's move on to Modin. Modin is intended to be a drop-in replacement for pandas. So instead of importing pandas, you just import Modin. Now Modin on the back end can use Dask or Ray. I guess since we just did Dask, let's go ahead and have it use Ray as our back end. Let's look here just at one of the summaries that they have about how much faster it is in reading CSVs, concatenating, applying. So let's go ahead and run this. So we're gonna pip install Modin. The version number of Modin that I'm running is 0.14.0. And we're gonna import Modin as PD and then we're gonna initialize Ray. Why don't we go ahead and as they say in the documentation to ensure that uses Ray as the back end and we will run the init. And we have this Ray dashboard again, uh, similar to when we just run, ran the Ray back end. So let's go ahead and time the reading in. You can see in the dashboard stuff's going on. 
has taken three minutes and 45 seconds to load in the data frame. Let's see if running the head command is quick on it. And yes, it is. It just takes uh, two milliseconds to run head. Oh wait, it's still doing something. So I thought that running the head command would work. Uh, it executed, but then it looks like we had some issue with the back end and we have to restart Ray. I'm not quite sure, but let's just continue on. So let's see if we can get the mean value of the X column. Yes, and it worked and it was fairly quick. Similarly, the standard deviation, 5.75 seconds using Modin to calculate the unique user IDs. Got the unique user IDs in two minutes, 47 seconds, cumulative sum, very quick. And this group by aggregation. Okay, so Modin ran this group by in four minutes and 44 seconds, and I've put my Modin results here. Let's move on to our last alternative to pandas, and that is called VAX. It says VAX is a Python library for lazy out of core data frames, similar to pandas, to visualize and explore big tabular data sets. Perfect. That's what we have right here is a big tabular data set. It's not in the billionth dimension, but let's see how it performs in our benchmark. And I'll make sure I start from scratch by installing it. Looks like there's a lot of different versions here. So we have VIX, Jupyter, Core, HDF5. Let's do our first test, which is reading in this data frame, this parquet file. We use VX.open. And that happened very quickly. Let's see it's because if it's because of the lazy evaluation. So we'll run a head command on this. I can assure you it did not take a long time, but it was not this 758 microseconds. It does look similar to pandas in that manner. Let's go ahead with our comparison here. All right, so the mean value computed fairly quickly. Standard deviation was quick as well. Let's see what unique takes because that took a while on pandas. All right, so the unique value took 29.5 seconds. That's pleasantly a lot quicker than the previous ones. And we do see we have a list here, it looks like of unique values. So it looks like that computed correctly. Let's run the cumulative sum. Okay, so this is an issue. Uh, it looks like VX may not have cumulative sum implemented. So, so I couldn't find if there was cumulative sum in their documents and it looks like it's just not available. So it might be a stripped down version of pandas. Uh, let's go ahead and run this group by mean. And looking at their documentation, it looks like this group by function is a little bit different than it would look like in pandas. So we have to run the group by and then run an aggregation on this X column. Looks like it's done and it took one minutes, 22 seconds. The results do look like they've grouped by the user ID and given us a mean value. All right, so here are the results for VIX. Surprisingly, it was faster than I expected. I hadn't really heard of VIX before this and um, it did pretty well. Now, cumulative sum does not uh, exist in their documentation from what I could tell but other stuff was okay. So let's do a final comparison. I'm gonna be honest, this was one of the most frustrating videos I've put together yet, just because of the amount of time it takes to run all this stuff. And um, this is commonly my feeling when I try to use these alternatives to pandas. I may be using it incorrectly, so please let me know in the comments below if there's something that I did wrong. But at least for this type of application, um, I'm not super excited by the results. Let's let's gather them together though. Okay, so I've taken all the results and of course I've imported pandas and numpy and created a data frame just by typing in with each test as a row. As you can see here, VX was actually very fast compared to all the other th three in reading, which I was surprised by. Um, for some reason, computing the mean value for Dask really took a while. Standard deviation for all of them took a lot longer than Pandas, which was the winner there. The unique count, VX, was the, the winner. Then cumulative sum was really slow for Dask. And uh, Modin was actually faster than Pandas. And finally, our group by, it looks like Pandas and VX are fairly similar and Dask and Modin are slower. 
So at least my takeaway today from this experiment is that Pandas does pretty well on its own, even on fairly large data sets on the right machine. VAX does seem to be promising, but it doesn't look like it has implemented everything that Pandas has, like cumulative sum. And the other two, Dask and Modin, look like they may have benefits in certain situations, but definitely not when you have a data set in a machine that I was running it on today. So I hope you learned a lot and this will help you in the future when you're deciding if and when to use Pandas alternatives. Until next time, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Have a good one.